Hey. <laughs> this is Ted Turner with the Dragonfly brush. I've had several requests to not do a time lapse image of what I'm doing with these brushes as far as how to letter with them, but I'm going to actually do this more of a real time, kind of capture the whole how do these brushes work. What I'm going to be using is a Dragonfly number two, Dragonfly number four, and a Dragonfly double zero. This is a synthetic. Uh, full synthetic made by Andrew Mack Brush Company, Jonesville, Michigan. Um, I've already got this, got a thumbnail, little thumbnail layout up here. It says hand lettering with a dragonfly brush, Andrew, with a dragonfly high performance brush, Andrew Mack and Sons. And I'll just put a little web address down here. We'll do this as a, kind of a quick exercise, not like we're trying to do a show card or anything super elaborate, but just enough to understand what this brush is capable of. The paint viscosity, this is one shot. Um, might be kind of hard to see as the color runs down the rim of the cup. Um, straight out of the can with just a little bit of turps. Um, percentage, it's a couple percent, five percent, three percent, not a lot. Just enough to make it flow a little bit faster, but not enough so it really runs fast on the edge of the cup. That's always been 25, 30 years of hand lettering. That's always my judge is how fast the color runs down on the inside of the cup. That's usually my guide. So we're just going to do a little, just a nice little sign painter gothic, kind of a gas pipe, stove pipe, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to try and do this and not have the battery of the camera run out like it did last time. So that was just practice. So I said there's a dark blue layout, just guidelines on here that's with the uh, with an Omnichrome or a stabler calls them a Lumicolor pencil, dark blue, so it's just barely showing up on here. So it's um, just enough to give me a hint where I'm going. This is this is really just an exercise in how to use these synthetic brushes to letter with. A lot of cases I keep the brush very vertical, but with this letter being kind of small, I'm maybe at 45 degrees to the surface no no more that's not uh, it's not like using a quill where you might lay the brush down just a little bit more or that's always been my experience i like to i would let a quill lay flatter to the surface but this is this is a brush that you're going to use more of the tip uh, think of the the filament or the bristle as is your gas tank and you're going to you're just going to you're going to ease this thing around you're just going to barely apply tip pressure and it's going to let that wick the paint right down the ferrule and right down from the bristle not from the ferrule right down the bristle and you get a pretty nice even distribution it's not going to empty out too fast so you can you can move along I, I just I don't over palette with this brush I just maybe give it just a little just a little bit on the rim of the cup just to even the paint out that's on the bristle because you'll see that it's going to want to start to put a little bit in the belly right here of this of this little drip so I'm just going to keep a watchful eye on what that's doing. And if I can I'm going to make just a little, I'm going to try and turn this like like I would with a bigger brush with say a quill to make these, you know, it, it's the efficiency of the stroke being able to go down, make a turn, keep moving. You guys have been doing this for a long time, you'll spot a mistake here and there. This isn't about, I'm not, I'm not getting over concerned about letter kerning, spacing, whatever you want to, whatever way you want to look at it. This is all just use of the brush and how many different ways that this can be able to be a useful tool for you for your kit. I realize I'm going to kind of be working in my own way here a little bit, so I might have to block part of my own view here a little bit just so I'm able to let you capture what I'm trying to accomplish here. So like, again, like I said, this is going to say hand lettering with a dragonfly high performance brush. Andrew Mack and Sons Jonesville, Michigan. MacBrush.com. Let's get everybody in there, right? It's like being at the racetrack and get your jersey on with or your 
your driver's seat down with all the names on it. All right, I'm gonna stop yakking and keep painting. I'm not, as, I'm not necessarily looking at this as doing copper plate, copper plate quality, where the bottoms of my letters are gonna be real super sharp, super flat. I'm okay with that. This is really more about if you're going to do this could be the bottom line of a door that says whatever your city is and then you could take this same brush at number two and go back and add pinstripe in other places on the truck or car whatever you're working on race cars you're doing the, a sale panel with a crew name and you might add you might use this same brush to outline you can you can work fast without having to think about changing to a striping brush and go from this brush to that brush you can do a lot with just the one. So right now I'm going to set the number two down and we're going to go to one of the go to the big brush there. Let's go to the number four. I've always been kind of a mall stick painter but in this case I want to get down a little bit closer. Set my mall stick down so it doesn't roll away on me so I can get it later. So this one sometimes I like to get in just a little bit closer you know I don't like to get in so close that things are out of focus but I do like to slow down just a little bit if I feel the brush is going to be a little a little big for where I'm working this is where I'm going to try and slow down a little bit I like to think when I'm doing script with this, I, I think of who my who my influences are of looking through magazines over the years, who my friends are that are really great lettering experts and trying to find places where I can mimic some, some of their moves with this brush. Some places I can get some of my own that they don't because it's a different response. Synthetic brush is going to give you a little different action than a, than a natural bristle like a quill. But you can see there's just a little, you can see just a little flat, just a little chisel that's on there. So I'm able to set this brush down, slide it sideways, pull it, lift up, go back in and do my diagonal stroke and connect it. There's a little, there's a teeny tiny little, little bristle that just kind of flung out just a little bit. But this surface is black masonite, so it's it does have a little tooth to it, so that's giving me a little, little bit of texture that I kind of like while I'm doing these little experiments with lettering or striping. I've painted on smooth surface long enough that I like something that gives me a little different challenge. Some might look at this and say it's a little bit of a non-traditional approach to how, to how to connect the script together, but I like seeing if I can maybe get my letter shapes to land a little different than I planned on. The D and the F are pretty good indicators of what I like to do when I stripe with a dragonfly brush. So I can make these tight turns and loops and that brush really stays planted quite well. It doesn't, uh, you don't get bristle at once to track off to the side and put a, a stray, stray stroke of color down where you didn't want it. Then you have to go in and try and touch it up or clean it up. This really holds the color well. That was a little script with the number four, and then the other side of this, I'm going to do this little, this little, there's two lines of text, high performance brush, I'm going to do with this number four also, it's pretty small for, for a brush that's this big. I do use a little turps in the cup, if, it's, if this starts getting a little heavy, I'm just going to dip the tip a little bit and keep moving. 
just enough that I can keep it nearby. I work a lot on an easel, so this is kind of easy, but you can get these at any art supply store. Just keep, I like to keep them capped until I need them. So this is just going to be like a sign, you know, just a little bitty plug letter style. It's a little semi-casual. Like a semi-casual, I don't know. Just enough to not feel like it's um, just rushed to be in. Just as fast as we can do, let's give it a little, little formal feature here. I'm going to try to get this done in under 20 minutes so it feels like it's miniature paper sign slash pseudo show card kind of feel to it that we have some this is an opportunity to make the layout be a little interesting. Which provides the challenge of how to let the all these different lines of text be something to have a different technique applied to them. Much. You can see where these are chiseled a little bit better where I started and I'm kind of slacking a little bit here. Let's back to where I've got that little, this little tip on it here. Just to stay chiseled in place, we'll see if we can get this to stay put just a little bit better, make this a little bit more thick and thin. is a little bit springier. It's a little snappier than what you would expect from a natural bristle, squirrel, sable, whichever. So it's gonna have a little, it'll, it'll move on you a little bit, but it, it gets predictable. All right. We'll wash those out. These are it's cool enough temperature when I'm working at. I'm not worried too much about getting that brush cleaned out right now. Let's get the brush exercise done first. So now we're going to the little guy. This is a double zero. And it's there's a lot of springiness to this little brush, but it's um, it's up to the task of doing some pretty small work, and you can get. I'm gonna try and do this. This whole Andrew Mack and Sons, real, real super fine. See if we can get something a little bit stylized. 
the stroke I'm getting right now is maybe a 30 second of an inch wide. And you can go, you can get it much finer than that if you get your viscosity where it's ideal for your surface, the scale of what you're working on. So this this little double zero would be a great it's a great outliner, it's a great detailer. Your custom painter, pinstriper, calligrapher, it doesn't matter what. If you're creative and need a you need a brush you can get in and do the fine work and be able to hold that the width of that stroke consistent, this'll do it. If I was to say what what features are or what factors are the most important with how this brush is going to respond, it's viscosity and the pressure that you put on the tip. Those are those are what will make all the difference in how well this brush responds for you. And it's not downhill to try and get the paint to flow down the uh, filament. It's just like it's just like any other type of lettering. Anything I've ever done, it's always that my brushes, my brushes at upward angle, pull it down. It's not something you're going to use for doing a, a big wall mural project. It's not it's not for striping the side of a put of a semi tractor. This is more. This is a brush that's for smaller scale work. Now you can't. It's just a matter of it. it's not a brush that's going to hold the, as much paint as what you expect to go six or eight feet long down the side of a panel. So the last piece in here I'm going to do just my my online store URL on here, which is Ted Turner Design at Big Cartel. Ted Turner Design dot bigcartel.com So I'm going to do this a little lower case Sometimes I end up just playing with what these letter forms could be. I might find that this brush gives me some more dynamic response that I didn't plan on and it will give me some shapes I was not expecting to see and that in turn Okay, I got just a couple minutes left to this battery. Hopefully, it doesn't run out.
Don't buy a car. Russ Darrelly Sons shops the competition for you. Please use online data to ensure the Now I'm going to have to go fast. My battery's only going to give me another minute or two and I'm going to be out. And I want to capture this all in one sitting. I think you're seeing what the capability of this brush is. Striping, lettering, outlining, scroll, script. Dragonflies out. Get him wet. Explore what you didn't think you would before. Sketchy down here. Let's try and get it done though. Like I said this is a it's a it's a interesting brush that if you'd never have used synthetic to letter with before, you can get them two ways. You can buy a set of triple zero through number one, the little fellas, thirty bucks. You can get the big ones from two to number five. Get them all, I got a limited edition set. Here comes with a hand painted pinstripe panel, one of a kind piece of art. Painted with one of these brushes. I said it's trying to get done before my battery runs out here and I'm ending up with some shapes that I probably wouldn't have thought I would have got with these letters. But it's enough, I go back and take a look and say, there's enough there I want to try something else with it. See if I can get a little script signature in here before it's done. It's the only place I lay this brush down sideways with the way I sign my panels. That's it. That's the Dragonfly High Performance Brushes from Mac Brush Company. No charge for the extra paint. Thank you.